I feel like we have heard stories of people who get their calling at a young age and then they just run with passion in it for 50, 60 years. And we stand in all of that. And in some ways we have made idols Mm. out of these rare, miraculous stories to the detriment of the day in, day out, faithfully seeking God for what is my calling? What is my purpose today? Yeah. Here. Well, now. and even knowing some of those people, and Aaron, I, were you about to say something? Oh, I want to hear. I want to hear what you're going to say. But knowing some of those people, like personally, mm-hmm. I'll tell you right now, they knew that they were called to go a certain direction, but they had no idea what that yeah. direction would hold for yeah. them. And so their journey required a lot of faith, a lot of hope, a lot of trust, a lot of risk, mm-hmm. a lot of courage to actually live out what God had spoken to them. Yeah. And a lot of perseverance. A lot of perseverance. Like you were oh. saying, that is developed going after whatever you're going after. Yeah. Well, and then going back to what you were even saying is fostering the relationship with the Holy Spirit. Is like if you are having this question or if you have your kids, good. they're having this question around what is my life calling? What am I supposed to do after yeah. high school? And, and they're coming face to face with that reality. Like encourage themselves or encourage them to go deeper into what God has for them within scripture. Yeah. Because the key mm-hmm. thing to within that was that they knew the Holy Spirit's voice. They knew it so well that they were able to differentiate between the Holy Spirit and Jesus. And so there was a close proximity of their relationship with God. And I think sometimes if we're having, like uh, when I have conversations with people that they don't know what they're doing, I'm uh, first question I'm always asking them is how is their relationship with God? Like what has God been revealing to you within Mm. scripture recently? And, And that's normally the key thing. I remember my senior year of high school was the time period that I, I dove deep into what God had for me. And I really started taking my relationship with God seriously. And he asked me to completely do something, which was not go to college, which was contrary to what everyone else was doing in my school. And I know it's become maybe more and more uh, common nowadays, but back then it felt like every single person was going to college and I had opportunities to go to college. But yet because of my relationship with God, I felt like I felt his leading on this and it gave yeah. me more security in making a decision that I didn't fully know. Well, yeah, if I'm taking a yeah. year off, what does that mean? Yeah. Like, what is that year going to look like? Yeah. But because I had that trust and that that leading of the voice of God, that that God orders the steps of a righteous man, yes. I was able to make those steps and be able yeah. to take those things, not, not questioning of, oh man, am I doing everything wrong and what's going on? Sure. I mean, sure, there's questions around that, but to really have peace and that understanding. And I think peace is not, like, mm. oh man, everything is perfect no. and nothing. Yeah. Like I, I have just this inner peace because I look at Abraham, like Abraham had a word from God to go sacrifice Isaac. And the Bible talks about the peace that he had within that. Like there, there's no way he had peace. He's probably looking at that mountain thinking to himself, I have to sacrifice my son on that. Yeah. But they were speaking to yeah. the inner, like this depth of peace yeah. Yeah. that God yeah. gives us is that through the, the the situations of feeling like, you know, God, it this doesn't look right, but I, I know your voice. And that peace comes from just trusting in on the voice, yeah. not the the feelings or the, the situations that are going on around you, but that yeah. inner connection that you have with the yeah. voice of God. And so that's going to be the key. I mean, in fostering relationships, fostering your purpose, it, it, seeing your kids have a, a healthy yeah. understanding of, of their relationship yeah. with God, and it's that's not good. based off of your relationship with mm-hmm. God, it's going to be the thing that's going yes. to continue to foster that purpose within their life. And you so. not trying to be God. Yeah. Mm. I think as parents, it is scary when you want your children to have this vibrant, lively relationship with the Lord. It's scary when it feels like God's not talking back to them wow. and they're asking you, but I'm asking God and he's not telling me. So what now? And you have to fight as a parent of someone who's 12, 13, yeah. older when they have to make decisions. Yeah. Like it's not, hey, go pray about it because you're in it with them. Mm-hmm. So. I think Addison does this really beautifully where, yes, it's between you and God, but I'm here with you because Mm. you are still a 13-year-old son in our home alongside me. I'm fostering that relationship between you and God, knowing that what we're we're moving towards is just you and God. But I want you to have a foundation of doing it well.